Keyword research has gained me millions of views across multiple channels on YouTube. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the exact strategies for finding the best keywords that you can rank for and get thousands of views on YouTube, regardless of the size of your channel. Not only that, I'm gonna show you how to find the right keywords, what tools to use to find them, how to qualify them so that you know if you can actually rank for them, and even how to optimize your videos to rank number one in search. And guys, I have nothing to sell you in this video, so if you do get value out of it, please make sure to like and subscribe. So to start, let's talk about what keyword research actually is. And essentially, keyword research is the process of finding what keywords people are actually searching for, and then vetting those keywords to make sure that it will actually get views for our YouTube channel and getting the information that we need to be able to rank for those keywords by optimizing our videos. Now, if you just go out there and blindly create videos without doing keyword research first, you're probably gonna waste a lot of time creating videos on things that people aren't actually searching for. You know, when you think about it, think about how when you search for something, you know, when you type it into the search bar in YouTube, you're typically clicking on one of those top three videos. You're not going to page two or page three to find a video on that topic. You're picking one of those top three videos. And that is why it is so, so important to be one of those top three videos that are ranking there when people are searching for topics in your niche. And guys, as we go through this tutorial, you're probably gonna have lots of questions. And this thing is very in depth. I'm gonna go through it in a lot of detail. So there's a good chance throughout this tutorial at some point I will answer your question. But if not, feel free to drop it in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer it in the comments or create a follow-up video. So let's actually dive into it and get started. All right, so one of the first things we're gonna do is we're actually gonna head into Notion and we're just gonna create a new page here and we're just gonna call this Keyword Research. All right, and we're gonna make this an empty page. All right, and we're gonna reference this throughout the tutorial as we start doing our keyword research, we're gonna use this file to capture information, keywords and views and all that kind of stuff. Now we're also going to come up here and we're gonna create a new Google Sheet and so I'll do a new spreadsheet here and we'll just rename this to keyword research and boom, there we go. And this sheet will allow us to capture keywords, but also put in search volume and be able to do some math and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to use both of these as we go throughout this tutorial. Now, one of the best places to start our actual keyword research is to actually just head into YouTube and we can begin typing our keywords in here. And what you're going to want to do is actually open a new tab in a incognito so I'll pull that up here because what will happen is your default browser is going to show search results based off your history so we want to make sure we get a clean fresh start in this all right so what I'm going to do as an example just to show you some stuff here is I can type any keyword here into the Google search and what it's going to do is it's going to start auto suggesting some of the most common type phrases for that particular word so I'm going to start out with uh, video editing for example and as I start typing video editing you'll see that all these keywords start popping up now the reason that YouTube is doing this is because these are the most common things that people are typing in to YouTube search box all of which means these are terms that people are actually searching for which can be very valuable insight as you do your keyword research now if I change this for example if I start typing in DaVinci Resolve you'll actually see a bunch more start popping up. Now, if I wanted to, what I could do here, and I'm on Mac, so I'm gonna hit Command Shift 4 here to take a screenshot. I can actually grab these keywords right here, grab that screenshot, and now, if I go back over to my Notion document, put a slash in here, go down to Image, I can actually upload that screenshot file right into our keyword research document. And boom, there we go. Now I have this for later, anytime that I wanna reference it. Now, if I head back over to our keyword research here, and I wanna show you a few other really cool things that you can do when searching keywords within YouTube. So for example, if I type in DaVinci Resolve, and then I type any letter after it, it's gonna autofill for that letter. So for example, if I start with A, it's gonna bring up DaVinci Resolve and then anything that starts with A. So this is telling me that pe people are searching for DaVinci Resolve audio editing, DaVinci Resolve animation, anime edit, DaVinci Resolve AI, and so on and so forth. Now I could go through the entire alphabet and do this exact same thing and get a ton more keywords. So for example, you know, let's say I like these ones. Again, I could take that screenshot of that right there, go over to my Notion document, add another image, grab that image, and boom, now I have some more keywords. 
No, you could literally go through the entire alphabet and get a ton of keywords this way, but I actually found a little shortcut that makes this faster. Now, the name of this tool is kind of interesting, but nonetheless, it's a pretty awesome tool. So if I come over here to a new tab and I type in that phrase there and I open this up, now I can type in my same keywords. So for example, if I type in DaVinci Resolve and hit the start button here. I want you to notice what happens. So if I scroll back to the top, and I'll actually stop this so, you, so we can see what's going on. But if I go to the top, first of all, it's doing the autofill for the most common things that people type when they search for DaVinci Resolve. So just like when I was in the YouTube search bar, I typed DaVinci Resolve, it would pop up the most popular things that are searched for that. So you can see that happening. But then once you get down here, you get all the things for A and then B and then C all the way through the entire alphabet. So this gives you a shortcut that you can actually get all that without having to manually do that, you know, by typing in the A, B, the C, the D, so on and so forth as you search within YouTube. So I can actually copy all of these. So I'm just going to hit Command A, which would be Control A on a PC, copy these, and I can actually come over to our spreadsheet and do a paste special value so I don't paste in any formatting, make that column a little wider, and now I have a ton of keywords for my particular topic. Now another neat little trick that I wanted to show you is when you are in YouTube, you can use a search operator, which is an underscore. So for example, if I come here to the beginning and if I type an underscore before DaVinci Resolve, you will see that this works as almost like a placeholder or a fill in the blank. So uh, for example, it's going to put any keywords that become before DaVinci Resolve or what people are searching for when they search for things with DaVinci Resolve in it. So for example, you'll see how to use DaVinci Resolve, how to download DaVinci Resolve, how to export video in DaVinci Resolve. Now, another thing I can do is I can do how to underscore DaVinci Resolve. And now if there's anything that goes in between here, like how to download DaVinci Resolve and how to use DaVinci Resolve, or if I do that same method, if I do how to do that, and then I'll do Microsoft. You can see what pops up. Let's try Microsoft Excel. So how to use Excel in Android mobile phone in English. So this works as a fill in the blanks or almost even like a wild card as you do in the search. And by doing that, you can get a ton more keywords. So okay, now another really cool tool that we can use is vidIQ. And this will require a paid plan, but their lowest plan is actually really cheap. If I click on this plans and pricing option here, uh, look at this. You can actually get the pro plan, which is all you will need to do this keyword research and everything we talk about in this video. It's only $10 a month, or if you pay for it annually, you can actually get it at $5 a month. So a pretty cool tool and not too much cost involved with this. So if I log in here, since I actually already have a plan here, so let me get logged in. Okay, so now that we're logged in, we're going to go to the keywords tab and we're just going to type in some of our same keywords that we were typing into YouTube search so let's just type in DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you what happens so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to pop up and it's going to give you some some da data here such as the search volume and the competition Now I don't put a whole lot of focus on this because I'll show you how to get a better idea of how many people are searching this what the competition looks like and how many views we can actually expect for a keyword so for now let's not pay a whole lot of attention to this what I want you to really focus Focus on is some of these other tabs that it gives you and it actually puts them in these boxes too but that is the related keywords the matching terms and the questions and we'll dive into some of these other ones like related words and uh, questions later but for now I want us to focus on the matching terms so if I click on this what I want you to notice is that all of the keywords in this matching terms box here has our initial keyword in it so if we start to look through these for example DaVinci Resolve 18 tutorial DaVinci Resolve tutorial and as I scroll down you'll see that DaVinci Resolve is in each one of these now if I were to try to just create a video and rank for the term DaVinci Resolve that's going to be extremely competitive and hard to rank for especially if I'm a newer type channel so what we want to do is start with the main keyword of whatever it is for your industry so if my channel focused on DaVinci Resolve tutorials I would start with the key term DaVinci Resolve and then I could go down and I could start drilling down even further you know if I wanted to I could actually drill 
down on DaVinci Resolve tutorial. So if I click on this, it's going to allow me to drill down to that specific keyword. And now I can follow that same process, for example. And now I can see that there's a bunch of other keywords that are probably easier to rank for that are a lot easier to rank for than just DaVinci Resolve. So for example, a more longer tail keyword here, DaVinci Resolve color grading tutorial or DaVinci Resolve effects tutorial, DaVinci Resolve advanced tutorial. So for example, now if I click on one of these, so let's do this DaVinci Resolve editing tutorial. Let's click on this and now let's go to matching terms one more time and let's see what we got. DaVinci Resolve video editing tutorial, very long tail, probably a good one that we could rank for. DaVinci Resolve editing starter tutorial for beginners, another good long tail keyword there. And as I go through these guys, I try to stay clear of the ones that don't make any sense or, you know, are related to another popular channel or anything like that. I'm looking for ones that I actually want to rank for. DaVinci Resolve editing tutorial TikTok. DaVinci Resolve gaming editing tutorial. So these are some really good ones, guys, that we could start to rank for. And what I could do as I I start to see keywords that I actually want to use. I can go through these and start putting check marks here for all the ones that I like. And then if I want to, I can either copy these keywords to my clipboard. For example, if I click copy, and now if I went over to my Google Sheet, I could come in here. I could paste these anywhere I wanted to. Remember, we're always going to paste values. Now, when I copy them, you'll see what it does is it puts them in a comma formatted output there, which we could do a data split text to columns and select our comma and press enter and you'll see that it actually split each one of those into its own cell you know I could I could edit these however I wanted to pull each of those over but this can actually take some time so instead of doing the copy and paste method that I showed you what you can actually do that's a little bit better if we go back into vidIQ I can hit export here and it's going to export this into a CSV file and if I come into Google Sheets just to be safe I'll open a new spreadsheet just to make sure it doesn't mess, mess up our original sheet and we'll do file import I'll click on upload go to my downloads where I just downloaded that grab the CSV file and click open and I'm just going to let it replace the spreadsheet detect automatically and click import data and and boom, it's actually going to import all the keywords from the matching terms list into my spreadsheet. And now what I can do is I can start copying the ones I want into our main spreadsheet that has all the keywords that we want to do more research on. So I could come through, copy these, bring them over and grab all the ones that I want until I have a nice master list here. Now, obviously we exported all those ones from our tool earlier. So we'd want to go through these and clean this up just to the ones that we actually want. So for example, if I was to start cleaning some of this up, I could start removing some of those, some of these that don't make sense for our channel. And I'd go through and clean that up so I had a nice list of titles uh, for potential videos or keywords that I wanted to rank for. Now, the other really cool thing inside of vidIQ is the related keywords. Now, unlike matching terms, if I click on related keywords, not all the terms in here are going to include our main keyword. It's not going to be a matching term like our matching terms. It's going to show things that are similar to DaVinci Resolve editing tutorial, for example. So as I scroll through these, you'll see some things like video editing. Very related but not an exact match to our keyword and this just gives you more options of things people are searching for like how to edit as a beginner and that might be something that later when we actually start coming up with titles and optimizing our videos for SEO where we grab multiple keywords to put in there this might be one that would be a good one to put into your title as well so this gets you access to a bunch more ideas that you could bring over into your sheet so for example if I just wanted that one I can copy this go over to my sheet come down to the bottom and post that in go back see what else we have there's a cool one copy that bring it into our sheet so let's do another example let's start all the way back in the beginning and we'll do a completely different niche here and let's just type in AI and see what comes up so we type that in we see how much search volume there for that particular term again if our niche was AI we would start very very broad and then work our way in to the more specific terms that we're going to rank for so if I follow our process we'll click on matching terms kind of see where we're at and just start to look for one that looks interesting that I want to create a video for on my channel so I'll go through here so we got AI video generator that one sounds pretty cool Leonardo AI very cool AI tool Photoshop AI 
AI. It's a cool one. AI voice generator, like those. Mid Journey AI tutorial, how to make money with AI, AI video editing. So let's say that I wanted to do one on Leonardo AI. So if I click on this and now go to my matching terms, now I have a bunch of keywords that have Leonardo AI in it. So Leonardo AI image to image, Leonardo AI versus Mid Journey. So that could be a video that I create. Leonardo AI image prompt, how to create image in Leonardo AI. How to write a prompt for Leonardo AI. Really like that one. That would be a good keyword to approach and try to rank for. Okay, so now let's actually start validating some of our ideas. So one of the first things I want to show you guys, if I start typing a keyword into my YouTube search here, I want you to see what happens. I want you to see these particular keyword amounts here. So what this is saying right here is that this keyword, DaVinci Resolve Training, gets searched 3,600 times a month. And if I actually hover over this little icon here to the right with the graph, it'll actually show me the volume for each month. So for example, January 2023, it got searched 2,900 times, where in December 2023, it got searched for 4,400 times. So this keyword is actually trending up. If I go down here to DaVinci Resolve tutorial and I hover over our graph on this one, you'll see all the last 12 months volume for this particular keyword. And this gives us a good indication whether a keyword is growing in search volume or growing in interest. And this right here, guys, is powered by a tool called Keywords Everywhere. So if I head over to their website, and it's actually a Google Chrome plugin that you install. If I just search for that, I'll pull up their main website here. Now, this is actually one of my favorite keyword tools because it gives us a ton of valuable research. Now, it's not YouTube specific. It can actually work for Google searches and all kinds of different things. But one of the things I love about it is it's so, so cheap. Guys, like you can get 100,000 credits, you know, if you buy it for the, for the year. And a credit is basically when I showed you right here, all these popping up. These are individual credits, but you can imagine with 100,000 of these, how many you actually can do before before you run out of credits and you can add credits. So it's not like you gotta wait for the year for your subscription to renew or anything like that. You can add credits, which I've never had to do by the way. Um, but you essentially use these credits as you do your searches and now these little search volumes pop up when you search for things. Now there's a ton of other things that happen. So uh, for example, if I click on one of these here, if I pull this particular one up, there's a bunch of other cool features that it gives you like on this page where there's a bunch of videos, it gives me a lot of information such as what the search volume is for that term, the top channel that's ranking for it, the maximum views on any video for that term, which is 2.2 million, the average views of 301,000, the average age of the videos, you know, what percentage of the videos have that keyword in the title itself, keywords in the description, and all kinds of stuff. So it gives me a ton of different data that I can use there. I can also scroll down and it's going to give me the most used tag, which can also give me a ton of other keyword ideas, some related keywords, so some pretty cool stuff. And just like before, if I hover over this, I can actually get that graph of search volume as well. And this is just another way that I can get some cool keywords and some data as I'm searching keywords. Now, if I were to actually click on one of these videos here, so let's, uh, let's find one here that we want to click on. So let's click on this one here. Okay, so check this out. At the top, you can see that it gives my search volume again. But here on the side, now it gives me some insights particular to this video that I clicked on. So now I can see that this video is getting 1,449 views per day. I can see how many subscribers this actual channel has, how many views that channel has, and the optimization score for this particular video. And if I hover over this right here, it actually gives me a more in-depth breakdown of that. So I can see that the video quality, they're ranking at 10 out of 10. The video length, they're giving a lower score based on the, the length of the video. It's giving me a broad match for the keyword that I search for in the title, a broad match in the description, the exact match in the title, the exact match in the description, the total tag characters, and the total tag. So overall, it is saying this video is an 80 out of 100. Now, obviously, we're going to make some decisions as we go through and we look at these particular videos, whether we think we can rank for them or not. But this gives us some other insight and some things to think about as we review the existing videos that are ranking. Now, if I go back out here, one other thing I wanted to show you about keywords everywhere is these little areas right here, it actually gives me some information about these videos without even clicking on them. So for example, it tells me 
you know, this channel has 1.5 million subs. And when I hover over that, it gives me particular information about that video without even having to open it up. It also gives me some other information like the engagement score, some, the views per day, and it gives me the SEO score for that video and why it's, it's ranked that way. Now, one of the other tools we talked about earlier, vidIQ, you can actually see that it's giving me some information as well. Like it's telling me that there's this channel has 1.58 million subscribers, which we already know from the Keywords Everywhere tool, but just another thing that you can use Use as you do your research and you can see this is posted on every single video as we go through here now with vidIQ we get some other cool features if I scroll down you can see it's giving us that keyword score that it was before and it gives us some other insights like the highest number of views on a video the average number of views the average subscribers the number of videos added in the last seven days for that topic the average age of those the times that the, that title shows up and the top creator so it's giving us some pretty cool information as well as also it's giving us some top related opportunities. And I can even click on these to get a longer list of those keywords. And then with vidIQ, if I drill into these videos as well, so if I click on that same one, you'll see that vidIQ actually gives us some tools to work with as well. One of their more popular ones that they're coming out with now is their AI coach. So I could ask it questions about this particular yeah, video, easy. like, you know, why did this video do well? I could click on that, for example. And the AI is actually gonna give me some input on why it thinks this video did well that I could use when I create my own video. Now it's also going to give us some information like their vidIQ score and what that means. It's going to give us the number of views this video is getting per hour, the total number of views, and the duration of the video. And it gives us a lot more information, you know, probably more than you'll ever need if you want to go through this and look at the video optimization checklist, uh, more information about the channel, the tags, the topics, all that kind of stuff. But one of the things that we're going to focus on as we do our validation of keywords is this tool right here which is the historical graph now if I click on this this is going to give us a couple things so number one it's going to show the historical graph of views and as you see as I scroll along this here you're going to see the number of views of it going up over time and typically when you see a nice trend like this you're typically getting a keyword that's getting a lot of search traffic or a video that's getting a lot of search traffic when you got a nice steady trend like this you know if you get one that you know spikes up really high and then goes down and kind of tails off or one that is kind of just moving along right here and then spikes up real sharp that's typically you know something like suggested views or they, they hit the home page or something like that that's driving the views for those videos opposed to the keyword research and the SEO value of that term now and then you come down here you can actually see the views per hour graph so I can see that on December 12th here it was getting about 46.3 views per hour and I can kind of follow this along on the 13th where it's 63 60 yeah 63.6 come to the next day 67.5 I can kind of hover over and get an idea on a daily basis how well this video is performing so you can see on December 28th this thing was up to 87 views per day and 70 here and then the most recent was at 57 and a half so this gives me an idea of how many people are watching this video every single hour now I could actually download this as a CSV if I wanted to but between this views per hour looking at this trend line and using the views per day from keywords everywhere I can get a good idea of how many views I could potentially get if I were to rank for this keyword now if I wanted to I could actually in my spreadsheet if I wanted to I could add a column for example for views per day so if I find my keyword actually we want to go to this one if I find my keyword DaVinci Resolve tutorial and I wanted to paste that 1,449 in here and just put in a column that, you know, for example, it says VPD views per day, make that bold, center that, make this column over here, my keyword, make this bold, give us a little heading here, center this row here. You know, I can do that. I can do views per hour, copy our formatting there. And then if I wanted to go back to my video here, I can get the most recent views per hour and just put in 61. So we'll plug that in, 61, right? And this would allow me to start getting some data for the particular videos and keywords that I wanna create. Now, if I go back to the videos that are ranking for this, if I just kind of scroll through this, now we're searching for DaVinci Resolve tutorial. So if I look through this, the videos ranking for this have 
5 million subscribers, 401,000, 125,000, 5.9 million, the same channel there with 1.5, 714,000 subscribers. So at first glance, this is going to be pretty tough to rank for. Now, not a lot of them are using the exact keyword in the title, but for me, if I was a smaller channel or someone just getting started, I would want to drill down and try to create a more specific tutorial that we have a better chance for ranking for. So if we go back to our spreadsheet here, let's search this one, DaVinci Resolve Video Editing Tutorial, and see what kind of competition we have here. So let's plug this in. Our keywords everywhere tool is telling us this is getting searched 50 times a month. But let's actually search this and let's see what pops up here. So just a quick glance, you can scroll down here. This one here, not really capitalizing on our keyword, DaVinci Resolve Video Editing Tutorial. It's, it's more vague. This one here definitely targets it, but it's a playlist. This one doesn't really target it. Let's see, again, doesn't really target it. Has the keywords, but not in the same order. So looking at this, guys, this would actually be a nice surprise that this would be a good one to create a video one because even though there's some big channels here none of them are really specifically targeting this keyword exactly how it's written now of course it's only getting 50 searches per month but as a smaller or newer channel getting those small amount of views could get a video started get some traffic going and we know that a lot of people are searching for these DaVinci Resolve tutorials because you know videos like this are getting 1500 a day this one's getting 613 this one's getting 181 so as we start getting some search traffic we can start picking up some of that other suggested traffic and things like that where a video that we could rank for like this could get our channel some traction and then we could start blowing up getting some other views from other sources so this one would actually be a really good one to create so I would copy that and make sure that this particular one is on my spreadsheet we actually don't have views per day or views per hour on this because none of these videos are directly targeting that keyword and on my keyword spreadsheet here. I'm going to actually add another column here if I wanted to for search volume. And we know that this particular one is getting 50. If I go back to this one just so we can plug that in there as well, this one was getting 6,600. Now let's actually run another example. So if I go back to vidIQ earlier, we were doing one here for Leonardo AI. And we'll do a search on that. We'll click on matching terms. And let's see, let's look for an interesting one here. I'll click this one, see what I get of matching terms for this. Just kind of look around here. And let's actually do this Leonardo AI image to image prompt. This is saying it gets about 2,096 searches per month. Very low competition keyword. Let's actually copy this over into YouTube here. And let's see what see what pops up okay so we have a channel here ranking for this Leonardo AI image to image now just something to note is they're ranking for the first part of this keyword but they're not ranking for the prompt piece and check this out they only have 1.7 K subs and this video right here is actually getting 53 views per day let's go down here Leonardo AI tutorial image prompt and Leonardo AI so similar keyword but not our exact keyword now this is a bigger channel that has 55 5k subs but this video is getting 128 views per day and it's not using our exact keyword which is a good sign now again this one has elements of our keyword but not exactly how it's written getting 205 views per day and a channel with only 12 and a half thousand subs one here that's getting a thousand fifty three views a day and this is on a new feature of Leonardo which isn't our relevant keyword so this would give me an idea of something that I would want to create if I was in this niche so again this would probably be a really good one to create that we could rank for. Now for this particular one, Keywords Everywhere is actually showing a search volume of 90 per month. So if I wanted to, I could plug this into my sheet, come over here. Obviously these are two different niches, but we could get the same idea here. And if I do view freeze up to row and view freeze up to column A, now that will lock those headings there. So I could put in my search volume of 90 per month and let's go back over to our results. And the closest one related to our keyword is getting about 53 views per day. So I'll plug that in. 
And if I actually click on this video here, I'll use vidIQ to get my views per hour. And we'll go with the most recent of 1.6 and we'll plug that in. And just as I investigate this, see that back in July, this thing had about 92 views and it's just steadily going up over time, which is a good indication that it's actually getting search traffic. And if I view this thing, it really spiked back in its release and kind of has, has went down on a traje trajectory. But these spikes, you know, it's it's only between, you know, one view and basically six views is where this thing goes. But nonetheless, it's getting steady views each day and each hour, even if it's only a couple views per hour as a smaller channel, this could be one that you could rank for. And guys, we could keep doing this and doing this over and over again for all the different keywords that we have in our list. So I could go through this list and fine tune this to all the ones that sound really good for my particular channel, pop them in to vidIQ to get, get the matching terms so I could get even more and I could even go deeper on each one of those keywords into the long tail keywords. And then I plug them into the YouTube search results and start getting the search volume, those views per day and those views per hour, you know, to really see if it's worth my time to create that particular video based on the number of views that it's getting, based on the numbers of searches that it's getting and whether or not I can actually rank for that video. Because why would I want to invest a lot of time into creating a really good video only to have not anybody searching for it, not anybody viewing videos on that topic or there's search volume there and there's views there, but I can't rank for it. You know, nobody goes to page three to view a video. They, they click on one of the videos that are on the first page at the top, right? So by doing this research up front, we can save ourselves so much time by not wasting time creating videos that aren't going to get views and that we can't rank for. Okay. So if we just kind of recap on the validation piece, you know, if we are trying to rank for a specific term, we want to look for other videos not capitalizing on that exact term or that exact phrase because that gives us a good indication that we have a good chance to rank for that video. Another good sign is that small channels are ranking for it because we know that if small channels are ranking for a particular keyword, that means that there's an opportunity for someone else to rank for it as well. Whether we're small or big, that opens the door that gives us the opportunity to rank for it. Now, another one that I always look at is video link, right? If they got a seven minute, 10 minute video, something like that, and I can go in and create a better, more detailed, longer video, it's got a better chance of ranking because people can see that. They can see that maybe this one's more in depth and they click on it. And then when they click on it, it goes into more detail. They get to more watch time, which can also help push us up in the search results. Next, you have the thumbnails, right? You look at it and you say, hey, can I create a better thumbnail than the one that's ranking? Because if I can get a higher click-through rate, chances are YouTube is going to push my video to the top over the other video. And the last one that I look for is how old are the videos? You know, a more relevant up-to-date video is going to do better than a two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old video, right? So if I can come up with one where the top video that's ranking is an older video, I have a better chance of ranking if I can create a good video that is more up-to-date, more relevant, and more timely. So let's actually pick one of our keyword terms here, and I'm going to show you how to optimize for one. So we had our Leonardo AI image to image prompt one. So let's actually copy this. And before we actually go into YouTube and try to optimize this keyword, let's actually go into chat GPT and let's say I am creating a video with the keyword of I'm going to paste in our keyword and I'm going to say, I want to start my video title with these exact words. However, I would also like to make this a clickable title that people want to click and watch the video. Can you give me 10 ideas that start with that exact term? And I'm being really specific that I want it to start with that exact term because we know that helps our YouTube SEO value and I'm making it very clear to chat GPT because it has a tendency to give me ideas that don't start with that. And let's see what it does here. And as you can see, it actually did uh, change it in a lot of these. So Leonardo AI image to image prop. So Leonardo AI image to image prop, transforming photos beyond animation. So I'm actually not liking any of these outside of this one. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna come to our Notion doc here and I'm gonna paste this in just so I can workshop this this uh, title a little bit. And I might just wanna grab this right here because that's the start of it. AI image to image prompt 
mastery. And what I would like to do is put in another keyword here. So if I go to BitIQ, and I'm actually gonna cop this Leonardo AI. We actually have some related keywords right here. And actually, I think I might grab that one there, Leonardo AI prompts. That's one that gets a lot of searches, low competition, which again, I don't put too much weight to this, but this is just adding in an additional keyword to our title. So we can double it up there. And maybe I'll do something like this. And I'm just going to fix up the formatting of that a little bit. And now I've included two keywords in my title and I've made it more clickable by adding this mastery word here. And now if I come over to YouTube, we'll set this up and optimize this. Like we're going to post this as a video. So I'll click upload video. Now I'm not actually uploading a real video right now. So I'm just going to select anything here. All right. So I'm just going to paste our title in here and now we're going to move down to the description and I'm going to paste that title again right there. And for this, I, I don't want to keyword stuff this just by pasting the title again, but I will put that there because that's like the main point of our video. So that makes sense for that to start out in the description. And now I'm gonna head back over to ChatGPT and I'm gonna say, please help me write a YouTube video description for a video titled. And then I'm gonna say, please make this a keyword rich description that includes terms like Leonardo AI, image to image, prompt, Leonardo AI prompts, AI prompts, etc. Please make this read nice and not keyword stuff. And I'm just gonna peek in vidIQ real quick just to see if there's any other keywords I wanna use. Like maybe I'll use this, how to use Leonardo AI. Grab that one. We'll see if there's any others we wanna grab. Maybe we'll grab this prompt engineering. We'll grab that. Let's we'll see what it does here. It actually gives us a lot here. So let's go over how to harness the power of AI prompts, become a master in prompt engineering. This is actually really good. And obviously I would wanna clean this up to make sure it's relevant to my video. And if I like all of this, I can actually copy this whole thing and bring it in. And again, you would want to just clean that up. We'll post that in. Looking good. No, it's not made for kids. No paid promotion. I do like allowing the chapters. Leave all that the same. Let's come down to tags. Now for this, if I take my particular keyword, let's just copy this. Let's go into a new tab here. Let's open up YouTube in this tab. All right, so if I paste in my keyword here, and let's just see what videos pop up here. And if we remember, this is the one that was the closest to our keyword there. So we'll open this, and we can actually see what tags they used. And just looking at these, the I'm sauna. actually not a fan of these. So I'm gonna go back and see what some of these other videos are using. So let's grab this one, this one's similar. And let's paste this in this spreadsheet here and just see what it does here. So it's giving us all the search volume, all that kind of stuff, which that we don't care about too much. Just look for the tags that we want. So let's bring this over into Notion. Let's paste these in here and let's look at this. So with my tags, I like to start with the tags that are most relevant to the particular video. So I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna bring this one up as well. I'm gonna comma separate these because that's how we'll bring them into YouTube. And we'll grab that one, we'll grab that one. And I actually want my first keyword to be this right here. So paste that. And then I'm also gonna paste that again and get rid of prompt. So now I have my most relevant keywords for that particular video at the front. And then I've started to, to expand out into kind of the, the category of the video. If I go back over here, if I just type Leonardo AI, I can find some others here. So let's do how to use Leonardo AI as a prompt or as a keyword tag here. Got that one, that one there, add that. I don't think we have one that's just Leonardo AI just on its own, so we'll do that. We'll see if there's any other here real quick. Maybe a prompts guide, we'll grab that one, paste that in. And then what we would wanna do is just, you know, come to the more, you know, vague prompts, like the more broad tags, like AI software, AI prompts, prompt, engineering and then if I wanted to I could put something related to my channel 
you know, Creator Signals, William Fletcher, copy all of those. And now I'm gonna add those tags in and we would be good to go. Now, one of the things that I like to do that I also think really helps our keyword ranking is I like to put timestamps in my videos and I like to make them very keyword rich. So for example, if you go to some of the videos on my channel, so if I come in here to YouTube Studio and I click on one of my recent videos, like this one here, you'll see that I have these timestamps down here. So this particular video was how to write a video script for YouTube with AI. And you'll see that my first timestamp is how to write a video script for YouTube with AI. And then I put leveraging AI as a video script writing tool, which is another keyword. How do you use AI to write a video title. Again, a keyword, how to use AI to get YouTube title variations, generating video script ideas with ChatGPT. So all of these are very keyword rich. And the way I typically start this now, I start with ChatGPT to get some ideas flowing and then I actually go in and I refine them because it doesn't do a perfect job. But what I'll often do, if I actually I'll show you what I did for that particular video. So when I have my video script, if I go to that one, and this one's one that's already done, so it'll be down here. So once I get my entire video script ready to go, I can actually copy that video script and I can go into ChatGPT, open a new window. I can say, please help me come up with some keyword rich timestamps for my YouTube video. Here is the script for you to create the timestamps from. And I'll actually paste in the entire script and let it go to work. So if I scroll down here, you'll see what it does is it gives us some timestamps here. And if I bring those over and I'll go to our keyword research document we've been working in, obviously this video is on a different topic, but it's an example, so I don't have a script for it. But what I then do is I go through and I refine these. Now, one thing about ChatGPT is it's just making an estimation of where these timestamps go. So these aren't the actual timestamps. So what I do is I'll actually list them my video and update these actual times to the right times. But what I'll do is I'll use some of these. So for example, I got the power of AI in YouTube script writing. So, you know, this is a good keyword. My first one though, I always start with my main video title. So I'll put Leonardo AI image to image prompt mastery. So I'll paste that in there. And then, you know, maybe at one minute, even, you know, I go into this one and basically I'll do that until I refine all of this. And once I have all my timestamps done, and one thing to note is it doesn't put it in the, the right formatting because in YouTube, these are just spaces in between here. So I'll actually do that. Um, but once I have this whole thing done, I actually copy this, come over to my description. I already put my header in there for timestamps and I'll paste that in. And now when I post this video, these will turn into timestamps that people can click on, but it also makes my description much more keyword rich and people searching for particular keywords that show up in these timestamps can actually show in the search results. So when people click on that result, it actually takes them to that spot in my specific video, which gets more clicks, more views, more watch time, all that kind of stuff. So guys, I hope you can see the power in this. So, you know, we started all the way back at the beginning to, you know, finding the right keywords to then validating those keywords to now optimizing our videos for those keywords so that we can rank. So once you have a good video with good keywords and you validated the idea and now you got your video optimized, you need to learn how to write really good scripts. And that's why in the next video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that.